fifth video is going to take us through um, deriving the probability distribution for an exponential um, distribution and also look at the mean and standard deviation for it. There's a separate video that went into the idea behind it, um, which you can, what we should have watched before you get to this. Okay. So exponential distribution, we're using it to look at the time usually that it takes to, for an event to take place. Yeah. And for example, um, the one we're going to use just to get our heads around this is the arrival of a bus. So if we're expecting buses to arrive every two, uh, two, two twice a minute, then we would expect well, the first one to arrive in 30 seconds. And therefore, if we looked at what's the probability of it arriving in a particular second, it would be a 30th. Yeah? But in principle, we've got some constant rate here like we had in Poisson where lambda equals two, number of occurrences in a time. What we're going to do is to consider our time as a sort of Bernoulli trial. Well, a Bernoulli trial, if you haven't come across it, is one where we carry on doing something until we get the outcome that we're expecting. So, for example, we could toss a coin until we get ahead. So we could get... Um, in the first round, you could get head or a tail. So if we just had a look here, in the first um, little trial, we could get head or a tail, couldn't we? And if it was a tail, well, we haven't got our head yet, so we're going to toss the coin again, and we could get a head or a tail there. Um, so we could either get it after one, after two, after three, after four, couldn't we? And we can calculate the probability of that, couldn't we? Because there's a half a chance and a half... The probability is half and a half there and a half and a half. And we can multiply those probabilities out. So we've got a probability of a half of getting it on the first occasion. Or we've got a probability of a quarter of getting it on the second. Or an eighth on the third. And we could find the expected value from that. Um, so that's how a Bernoulli trial works in broad terms. And we could do exactly the same with rolling a six, couldn't we? Because... There's a, only, then there'll be a one-sixth chance of getting a six and stopping the game. Or we've got a five-sixth chance of not getting a six and we have to carry on the trial until we get one. So that's basically what we're going to use. And what we're going to use here for the bus arrivals um, is lots of little events. So little trials. So if we had a one-second trial, here's our... Yeah a one second trial um, in that one second we've got two outcomes we could have an arrival yes or not an arrival and we worked out earlier that the probability it was a yes was 1 30th and the probability of no was one was complementary one minus that now if we then extended this idea of rather than having one second we have a little time delta t and then the problem, um, we've got and a constant rate lambda, um, which in our case was two before, wasn't it? Then the probability in our in our first trial of any trial of period delta t, well, the probability of it, um, of actually a bus arriving is going to be lambda delta t, and therefore the complementary probability is going to, of it not arriving is be one minus lambda delta t and that all fits in with the example we had above so that's one trial of little time delta t and what we could do is use that little component to build our uh, Bernoulli trial so here's our first that's our first little trial of time delta t and but we, um, then we get our second little trial of delta t, third little delta t, fourth little delta t. And we can carry on doing this trial over and over and over again until each um, until we reach the point where um, the bus arrives. Yeah, it could be at 70 seconds. It could be at um, 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 you know, 50, 90 seconds. But what we're going to call it is each one of those. It's our nth little trial. Yep. Yeah? And we can work out the probability of that occurring because it's going to be the probability of the red line outcomes, isn't it? So it's a not 
not in the first, not in the second, not in the third, not in the fourth, not in the fifth, going on all the way till we get to the nth. And at the nth, it does arrive. So we could go through and multiply all those probabilities out, couldn't we? And what we'd be looking at here is lots of little trials. So let's just describe it like that. Now that it arrives after time t. Now what if we now want to look at it arriving not after time t, but after time t plus delta t. So let's add one more little trial. I'm doing this because it's an easy way of explaining how the maths comes about, the proof. Yeah? So we've just added one little trial of time delta t. So the rest of this all looks exactly the same, doesn't it? This trial here. And what we've got to add to it is the fact that we have in this uh, first period of little delta t that the bus doesn't arrive. And what we're interested in is what does that do to our probability? Well, we started off with our probability, and now we've got probability plus a little bit more, our delta p, delta probability. Yeah? Um, so here we've got two circumstances, haven't we? The top one here is the bus arrives in time t, and the bottom one here, the bus arrives in time t plus delta t. So we've got two little trial diagrams there. And if you have a look, there's a similarity between these two diagrams because they've both got this back end section is the same, isn't it, here and here. So what we can do is take our second diagram, there it is, and there's our probability p plus delta p, and think of it that we've added in this additional trial at the start, and then we know what the probability of the rest of this is. It's our probability arrived in period uh, p in time period t. Yeah. So that that's a fair representation of what's happening probabilistically, and we can just create a formula from that, can't we? Because the probability on the left here has got to be the same as the probability on the right. And the probability on the right is our probability of pt, everything in this box, then it's going to be multiplied by the probability that we went down that route, that we went down this route in our tree, and that's that 1 minus lambda delta t, isn't it? So all we've done there is multiply, create the right hand, uh, left hand side and right hand side, and that they must be equal, because that's how we get our delta p. Okay. And we can then just rearrange this a bit, can't we? If we expand the bracket, we on the right-hand side, we get this new expression where we've got PT separated out here from the 1 coming down to here. And that's the second uh, term there, second part of the bracket. That's that term there. And, of course, we can see we've got PT on both sides now, can't we? So we can cancel that out. And, therefore, we've got this formula here, that the small change in P equals... 1 minus lambda delta t times our probability for the period of time of t. Um, effectively, that is p of, that's delta p of t. There, isn't it? So, that is effectively a differential equation. And I've just rewritten it below by dividing through by delta t and then limiting it as delta t tends to zero. So what we've done is turn this into millions, millions of trials, haven't we? N's gone to infinity, delta t's gone to zero. And therefore we've got this nice equation here, differential equation. And we know how to solve that, don't we? Because if we divide through by p here, we've got an implicit integration that we can now do. So if we integrate that, the left-hand side, the um, side, let's multiply through by the delta t, isn't it? So we can integrate dt on the left right-hand side and dp on the left-hand side now. And the left-hand side is going to become log of p, and the right-hand side is just going to become minus lambda t plus a constant. And if I just power that equation up, so my left-hand side is now p, um, my right-hand side is going to be e to the minus uh, lambda t, but because I've got a plus c here, well, that's basically going to become a multiplier, isn't it? e to the c, and I'm just going to call that k. So I've now got an unknown variable at this point, haven't I? But we know p is proportional to e to the minus lambda t, and we know that the, all the probabilities, when summed up, must 
AM sum to one, mustn't they? The area of all of all the probable outcomes must sum to one. So if we integrate this over the range of time, and our range of time goes to um, zero all the way to infinity, our bus might turn up might not turn up to the end of the world, um, theoretically. So we just integrate that function. Of course, k is a constant through all of this, and that's got to equal one. So if we do that integration. We integrate there, we get this function, we substitute in infinity into this term, we get zero. We substitute zero into here, we're going to get e to the zero, which of course is one. And therefore rearranging that, we just get k equals lambda. And therefore our probability PDF is here, that the probability of a bus arriving in time t is lambda e to the minus lambda t, where lambda is the constant rate just as it is in a Poisson equation. So if we looked at that, we would quickly find that we've now got this curve here. So there's the curve and there's the PDF function. Um, and we can easily find out what the mean is because the mean, well, what we, we can use our formula, can't we? Here's our formula. Therefore, that we're just going to integrate um, integrate the probabilities over the time period, uh, our range of time periods. Here, rather than working in x, we're working in t, and our time periods from zero to infinity, and that is our our PDF function in t. So we're just going to integrate that, and we can use integration by parts here because that's basically going to be our u. And this bit here is going to be our V, and therefore we can quickly see. I'm just going to put it to there so we can see what we're doing. Um, so you can see it and stop the video if you want to. But basically, all I've done here is go, well, let's just carry on and integrate by parts. So we get our UV part there. There's our UV, isn't it? And that's our that's UDV. This is VDU. Yeah, VDU. In this case, it's by dt. And therefore, we can integrate that, and we'll get this function here. That's our integral. And again, we're going from infinity, and e to the minus infinity is 0, and much bigger than t. So that the, um, the infinity part is 0, and then we're going to be taking away the value of this lot when t equals 0. Well, the first term is going to be 0, and the second term is going to be the, come to this here. And therefore, we can see that yeah, e to the 0 equals 1. These minus, minus a minus is going to become a positive, and therefore our mean, so it should be over here, the you know, expected value or mean is going to be 1 over lambda, which makes sense, doesn't it? Because if we're having two buses a minute, then how long are we expecting it to be for the first bus to arrive? Well, half a minute. So there's our expected value. And we can do exactly the same sort of approach with the variance using our formula here, our generalised formula. If we integrate by parts, again, we've got a t squared this time for our u, and therefore we're going to have to go through and do a double integral. So here we get, there's our uv, and that's our v du by dt. Here we go. But now we've still got our t inside, so we have to go through the um, function again and do it. But that's what we did earlier, wasn't it? We found what the value of that was, and we know that that's, um, if that had a lambda at the top there, we know that that was the same function. That's um, from the mean. That's going to be, um, that would give us our mean value, which we already know. So we can then substitute that in. So we've got 2 over lambda, and there's our mean lambda there. And of course, our mean over here squared comes in the expected squared. And therefore, as a result, we find that the variance of t is equal to 1 over lambda squared. So there we are. Um, exponential distribution, which we use for arrival times of events, so times of buses to arrive, faults to occur, radioactive um, decay to take place, and we have to get a hit. We've got the same parameter constant rate of occurrence that we saw in, um, in Poisson, and therefore we've got the same rules applying that it's a constant rate and the events are independent. Um, in this case, there's only one event. 
and therefore we get our PDF here, our expected value and our variance, and we've got a distribution that looks like that. There we go. I hope that's of use to you.